Hello my lovelies, Robbie here from Kickback Garage and welcome to Clockerham. Right, my lovelies, this is the first official ride out of the year and we're really, really lucky with the weather. The last three weeks we have had nothing but snow, slush, sleet, rain, then sleet again and then rain for, uh, for the last week solid and this is the first day I actually got nice weather. And the good thing about that is we've got quite a good turn up uh, or turnout. <laughs> um, Hans for the TV 175. He is at the uh, at his cabin, and Steve is at the cabin. So some of the likely lads, the normal ones that go proper riding with us, they have not turned up today. It's like a normal thing. Oh, Hans has got problems. <laughs> it's uh I don't think I want to hang around here. Oh, there's always one. It's funny I posted on Facebook the other day, can you stay there please? She's not even looking in my direction. Um it was uh, whippy yesterday or this weekend and uh, someone said it looked like a Lamberti graveyard uh, on the road into Whitby and that is because people do not keep tabs on their winter maintenance my son Sebastian he isn't come with us either because he is uh, Yeah, he has to visit the parents to his girlfriend today for, for lunch, for dinner. And uh, that's, that's the strange thing is, I think it's the first time clock are run. Like when we put the clocks, uh, adjust the clocks. I think that's the first time we're talking about that. First time I can remember that that has uh, happened on uh, Easter weekend. Should I be a sport? and uh, drive past everyone to try and stop them so that we can wait for hands nah I don't think so everybody knows where we're going we're going on to my favourite bit of uh, stretch of road and then uh, we're going to park up take some photos it's not a long ride 60 kilometres something like that and um, going to eat some waffles afterwards but what I thought I would do is use the opportunity for some good old-fashioned uh, vloggage so the first thing I wanted to uh, talk about was my gearing because I if you follow the channel you will know that I adjusted I adjusted my uh, gearing I went from 4.7 to 4.8 I really wanted to go to uh, 4.9 I think but uh, I'm actually quite pleased with it I uh, rode down uh, to uh, Spain Scooter Spa on the dual carriageway completely forgetting that I changed my rings they should really have a bit of a bedding in period there I reckon but I just winged it on the uh, on the dual carriageway in and uh, that worked out really well. I can uh, now s use fifth gear, which is nice. And it feels a little bit more sporty. So I don't think I'm going to go to the extreme of uh, changing my front sprocket so that I can achieve uh, 4 9. The problem is uh, with the uh, gearbox that I have, the Cyclone 5, 
if I change the front sprocket now, then I'll end up mm, closer to uh, 5 than uh, to 4.9. And then it might just be a little bit erratic. Now we've got some moped boys with us. So it's going slow. We've got a GTS. I mean, there's people that turn up at this at Clocker Run in the spring that we never see during the year. <laughs> And uh, the PX guy behind us, there's three white PXs, the PX guy behind us, I don't know who he is, he has uh, forgot to turn his indicators on. And uh, motorbikers are saying hello to us, which is uh, interesting. I think we've got two small frames, both with 75 or 85 kits. We've got Armour on his uh, Series 2. We got Svein on his GS 150, and we have lost again Hans, who is on his uh, GL Vespa GL. Nice, uh, nice scooter that uh, regional paint and stuff, and he is running a uh, BGM sitting there, and he. Uh, he likes things a little bit more racy, so he changed his sport, I'm not sure what it is, BGM Sport Exhaust. He changed it to something, Scooter RS or something he had lying around. And uh, I almost bet you he hasn't changed his jets and he's actually seized it. It has been a very, very long winter. I've got some uh, strange comments. When I'm in the garage, I say it's really cold in the garage. But this year it's been extreme. It's We've had proper, proper extreme weather. Because we're right down the south in Norway, and as you can see, we're right by the sea. You can see we're by the sea. Let's get rid of this uh, GTS. <laughs> um, it pulls really nicely. Love the RT uh, 240 I've got in this. Uh, yeah, I don't know what I'm going to say now. Yeah, because we're right by the sea, we normally don't get that harsh winters. We get like a, a, a month of snow, and then and that's about it. And it's normally uh, the temperature is hovering around somewhere between minus uh, five if you're really unlucky, and up to about ten degrees during the winter months. But this year we had a really really long cold spell. We had two meters of snow for eight weeks. And uh, on the coldest days, it was minus 21, and that was when I was out in the garage. So, for some strange reason, people think that because I live in Norway, that the weather is uh, really terrible. But uh, the summers and springs here normally are absolutely uh, stunning. So, it was really odd, I have to say, really odd to get back onto the scooter. Because the last ride I've had on this was a clocker run last year when we rode in the snow. And uh, if you ride big motorbikes, it feels a little bit wobbly, doesn't it? <laughs> but you really do think you get really used to it really quick. Oh, they're riding so slow. It's a good job of just having a having a potter. It's actually the cars that are riding slow. They're actually adhering to the uh, to the speed limits, <laughs> which are 60 on this road. But uh, no, nope, I'm doing 35, so not really. Tourists, I reckon, out on their uh, Easter break, cruising around down here in southern Norway. second gear can I make it all the way this 
this hill is really steep. Yes, I can. Yep, so I haven't ruined the uh, the hill potential. I don't need to go down in uh, first gear like I used to on an, on the older TS1 uh, I owned. So that's nice. It's, it's really quite grunty. And uh, strangely enough, I feel like I've... Uh, I'm actually taking more advantage of the grunt having it lower geared, which is a bit odd. Another thing I wanted to talk about was uh, aren't we lucky? Uh, scooter owners in this day and age there is, are so many cool cylinders cylinder kits engine blocks there's two producers of twin um, cylinder engines now we've got Tino Sachi and we've got the the Italian boys so if you want uh, something different, something a little bit racy, or something a little bit toury, then you, the, the options are endless. The only annoyance is... Um, annoyance, the only uh, uh, shit thing about all this is it's really, really expensive. And uh, the reason why I'm talking about kits is that I have a two, I've, I've taken an extra job uh, during the winter, and I am saving my pennies because I really fancy myself one of those Casa Performance sledgehammers, the three, three, three cylinder kit which is crank induced not piston ported not quite crank induced it's reed valve but the petrol goes straight into the crank um, the reason why I'm looking at those is because it's a grunty touring engine apparently around about 30 horsepower but they're still uh, quite econ economical, eco econ <laughs> economical on the uh, on the petrol. And I like the cast case already. I've got one in this, and it does make changing seals, maintenance, normal maintenance is uh, really easy. Um, I would like to see if they came out with the. Um, touring type exhaust, a uh, box exhaust for that, but I don't think I'll fit it on this one, because I'm so pleased with the RT on this, I think when uh, this gives up the ghost, I'll just replay it and uh, keep going on, the, on this because I'm very happy with it but if I throw that in uh, the series 1 I think that's going to be fun enough for my son. He likes, uh, and I uh, put the Larry exhaust on that, and uh, see how that goes. But I'm just waiting a tiny little bit. They are out in the wild. I saw two partially built kits. They sell partially built kits on those with the uh, Casa case, which you need. I saw the silent blocks are fitted. Uh, you're basically missing the primary. I think the head cowl you have to buy and uh, if you've already got a super duper clutch like I have then you can use your primary 5 speed, 4 speed box whatever they've got lying around it's a cheaper way to build them but it's still not very cheap they cost at the moment they cost uh, 3,999 euro plus tax for us that don't live in the European Union and uh, th there's a few things you have to think about there first off the adjuster block 
has been redesigned so if you've already got a cast aside case which I have then you need to buy a new cable adjuster block it's just to move them out the way of the curb because the curb is uh, placed behind the silent blocks on that and because the curb is placed uh, awkwardly behind the silent blocks because it, uh, uh, it shoots in petrol straight into the uh, crankshaft and not the piston that also means you need to uh, either modify or buy a new uh, petrol tank and I saw the exhaust cost a whopping 800 euro so you're gonna end up the same sort of money as you would on an SST or SSR but I personally think uh, the SST, SSR they are a little bit too um, uh, they're a little bit too much really for, for road use I mean what would I be doing with an SST today right in behind these lads it's not really until we're on the big trips that we start uh, hammering oh if we uh, ride alone with uh, with Sebastian and it's better to have motors that are matched Ooh. so because uh, I haven't seen any out in a while or the reports of what people uh, have to say about them I am going to keep my money safe in the bank account because although it would be nice to be a test pilot it's very expensive and you can't just bolt another cylinder on it because of because it is uh, designed specially for the sledgehammer cylinder so it could be a really really expensive uh, thing to own if it doesn't run as uh, as they expect it to run it was so good to get out so good to get out on the scooter I have missed this so much and it's serious serious therapy getting out on the uh, two wheels I think the biggest difference with the uh, scooters compared to motorbikes is uh, you just need so little input in the handlebar to counter steer whereas when you've got a bigger wheel and a heavier machine you have to uh, sometimes fight that a little bit around done looks like it's going to start raining they had such a lovely time out with the boys like I said first time for ages almost seven months uh, that I forgot to uh, film an outro so I thought I'd do that now before my wife tells me off it is Easter Sunday we're gonna have a family dinner together starting to wonder if 
I don't need... I think I need a big garage. <laughs> anyway, I will love you and leave you. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget, if you like this kind of stuff, let me just put this down. The beast. They seem to be multiplying these things. I've got two Lambrettas and two KTMs. Um, yeah, uh, I'll uh, love you and leave it. Don't forget, if you like this kind of stuff, give me the old thumbs up. Don't forget to uh, subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you all in the next one. Ta-ra!